All right, old girl. Fire up, would ya? Oh, yeah. Well, folks, welcome back. As you can tell, I'm out in one of my favorite spots here, out in the meadow, and I'm heading out in the tractor. So, beautiful afternoon here. I got some work to do on the bush. What I'm gonna get up to today is I'm gonna go grab my chainsaw and stuff here at the tiny house, and then I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna cut one of my down logs to life. And I gotta do that because I need 14 footers in order to cover my trailer project. So taking the tractor out, gonna, uh, gonna use my trusty tape measure here, measure out some 14 foot lengths on the log I got down, drag it over to the mill, and hopefully get that milled in the next few days. And while I'm out here with the gravel on, I'm also gonna fill up the bunks on the sawmill so that while I'm milling the other logs for the trailer, I can mill some logs for the tiny house. So I've got so many projects on the go, I don't know when I'm getting them done. They'll get done one day, but I know for, know for certain it's probably not today. So anyways, come on along. We're heading out to the bush here. All right, let's go snag that, uh, snag that chainsaw. I think I left it in here. What do we got going on here today? Okay, which one are we taking? The big one, of course. I hope I got fuel in it. Good. I don't like to leave my saws without fuel in them for times like this. And we'll use the handy dandy rack system. Get in there. Perfect. And while I forget, or before I forget, I'm gonna sneak up, grab some air protection. Geez, would you look at that tiny house? Isn't that a beautiful thing? I tell you, here's a quick little run around. That thing's looking pretty sweet. Awesome, eh? Check out my other videos if you want to get more on that, but uh, definitely getting around. Just have that one side to finish. Just have to grab a little bit of lumber or make a little bit of lumber. So that's why I'm heading out to the bush. It's like heading down a bit of a goat trail here. I actually have to be pretty careful. I got a lot of trees hanging around and anytime this tractor starts to tilt one way or another, well, if you can imagine the top of this cap, probably like to meet the top of that tree if I'm not careful. Whoa, just like that. And then there was the creek, or spring, I guess I call it. This is one of the sketchiest parts for me. Definitely don't like to hang around that too much. I don't actually come back here in the winter with this thing. We get too much snow up here in Canada, so I'm gonna be wrapping up around these parts and believe it or not, probably eight weeks. Eight weeks time, we could have a foot of snow out here, so. And just while I'm driving here, folks, I don't know if you've seen my other videos or not, but if you haven't, this is my 2012 Coyote DK40 SE with the hydrostatic transmission. If you're interested in learning anything more about it, i got a whole bunch of videos dealing with it. I do everything out here with this thing from bringing in lumber to creating the driveway to mulching up chips. So make sure to check out those videos if you're interested. I absolutely love this thing and I put it through its paces. So if you guys are interested, that's the way to go. Well, there's the old trusty bunks. I got to fill up with logs. So as you can see, I think we got two there ready to be milled, but I need a few more. So we're going to go up here, get these logs that I already got piled up. But before that, I'm heading down that way because I've got a big log down that I forgot about in the winter. I think I can get a 14 footer out of it so I can use that for the trailer deck. All right, the only unfortunate part, I am now standing here and realizing that I do not have my chain for that baby, so I gotta go back and get it. So, in just a sec, I'll be back. And as I get back here, guess what else I'm realizing I forgot? The pins. It's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Well, let's get it hooked up and then I'll run back again and get the, well, the pins for the lower links there. One of the things I love about this Coyote, right there, so having the ability to adjust the lower links outside of the tractor cab is beautiful. All right, bear with me, I'm going to get the pins. So 
So just without having to look around, I've got some stumps here that if you're saying, why'd you cut them? Why didn't you cut them lower? Well, the reason I cut this in the winter, and so we had snow here. So I'm gonna try to straddle these so that uh, um, I don't get into the ruts with the tires. Keep in mind, you want some good ground clearance on the tractor, this coyote's got it. So as long as I don't hit that on the stump, I know I'm high enough. We made it. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with. So you can see this big one here. It's already losing a lot of the bark off it because it's been here for a while. So it's a decent sized tree. I can get an easy 14 feet out of it and then I'll get some deck boards for my trailer. So just gonna go get the tape, measure up the distance, cut it up, and then we'll drag it out of here. And while I'm thinking of it, for those of you who are out there looking to buy a tractor, very, very important you look at what you're gonna be doing with it. If you're out here doing stuff like I am and you don't have much ground clearance for a tractor, well, look at what's hanging down at the lowest point. I've seen pictures lately of tractors where they have various filters hanging down. And if that's going to be the first thing that touches the top of these stumps, well, you're going to have a bad day. So keep that in mind when you're out shopping for a tractor. All right, 14 feet. Now I'll account a little bit of extra for the butt end there. So let's cut it about 14 and a half feet. And I got some bugs in this one and that's to be expected. So I'm not looking for anything pristine here. Just figure I got this log here, why not use it, right? I think this tape's just about at the end. Oh, we'll just mark it there with a stick. How's that? 14 and a bit, good enough for me. Okay, well I got two of these hooked up and I'm just going to pull them forward with the chain here and basically try to pull it up to a point where they're close to in line with the others so that we can bundle them all up and drag them out of here. together and hopefully pull them both up. I actually ended up cutting more than I thought. So let's get these all bundled up. And do that one. And this is where a choker chain would be ideal, but so with a lot of things, right? Might not have. Thing's actually not too heavy, so. And I rigged up these uh, a while back. They're just some piece of rod that helps me to get under the logs to hook up the chains. Get on there. Well, that'll probably do. Snug this one up, lower this down.
And we'll see what else we can get. Good enough. using this three-point hitch is to hook the log up and be able to lift the front so you can just ride over stumps like this you get hung up with that it can create a mess so I'm gonna try to get this rigged up here well I got some of my old man strength kicked into gear and I heaved this thing over and got them all put together so all truth be told they're pretty dry they've been out here for a while so I'm gonna try to bring that one up and then in total I'll get uh, five logs in one haul so Anyways, let's get this unhooked. I'm dragged up a bit, and I'm going to lay the chain out like that and pull it onto the chain if all goes to plan. That one is real dry. It's not usually that good of a sign. Jeez, 14 footer, we're going to be able to drag this. What with that? Oh boy. That's probably not moving. What I'll do, I'm going to take some of this other chain here, loosen her off, run it over lengthwise to the other piece, pull it forward a bit, and see if that works. This is where a winch would come in handy too. But I've been able to stop thinking about that long enough to not buy one so good for the budget okay let's pull that out well good enough for me let's get this, this chain out of the way and we'll see what happens here well folks I got a bit of a jag on there and I think it looks pretty good we're going to try to haul this out of here without too much trouble. And I think I got it, got it set up high enough that we're, uh, we're not going to have any stump issues. So I guess, let's see. And one of the things that I really, really like about this reverse camera, I can focus on driving and watching where I'm going and still see the load behind me. So if you're in that boat where you're deciding whether to grab one of these backup cameras, I got a video on that showing how it gets installed, but I'd definitely buy it again. All right, let's see if we can get through this minefield up here with these stumps. Hoping everything's still looking good back there. I think we're just high enough to, uh, to make things work. So we'll find out in a moment. so good. Oh gosh, lost one. Well, that's just about how it goes. And funny enough, look at what the one I lost. It was off the small pile. <laughs> well folks, by golly, I think we made it. Minus one log. That's not bad, I guess. Anyways, I'm gonna go and uh, drop these suckers off. And I don't know if I'm getting the rest of this work today, but that's, uh, that's a pretty good start. Okay guys, well, I'm looking yonder and it looks like the sun's starting to set, so that means I'm about ready to lean back, idle down, and drop these logs off. I don't plan on getting the rest of those logs moved over to the sawmill today, but that's okay, I got other days ahead of me. So, you guys could all do me that favor, you know what it is. If you didn't like this content, hey, give me another shot, come on back next time. One thing I can promise you, I don't actually know what's coming, and so it'll surely be different. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all next time.